Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I am going to be explaining the five reasons why tree supports fail. And I'm also going to give the solutions for each one of those issues. So let's not waste any more time and get into this video. So I'm back with another support video, and this one is all about tree supports and the reasons why they fail. Honestly, this is not going to be one of those videos where I'm going to do like the top five countdown. No, this is just five reasons. Now, these all could be your problem. Every single one of them could be your problem. Or just one of them. And that's the thing. There are so many variables when it comes to supports. And I can't just tell you, okay, this is the most important one. Because maybe for you and the models that you're printing, it's the least important one. And this other one is the most important. So, I'm not going to say that this one's important versus this one. I think they're all important for those specific situations. And I am going to go into those situations for each one of these. So let's talk about the very first issue, and that is isolated towers or isolated tree trunks, however you want to call it. But you have one support structure going all the way up, and it's pretty high, and it's all by itself. It's not like there's a bunch of other things connecting to it. Like, maybe higher up on your model, you have, like, a chin or something like that. Like, actually, let's say you're printing this, and this has one support right here underneath the chin. So it is actually coming all the way up, and just putting it right there. And maybe while you're printing it, it keeps breaking off right about here because maybe it keeps wobbling or something is happening. And you want to make sure that you have enough of a sturdy support material to come up to hold up against that chin. So this is all about your tree trunk, the trunk diameter. And that is something that we can adjust in Kira to make it more stable. So, let's jump over to Kira, and I'm going to show you where we can change that and what that actually looks like when we change it. So we are now in Kira, and I went ahead and threw in this calibration cube that we can use as our example, because we have to have something to support. The first thing I want to do is bring this cube all the way up here so we can have something to support. But you can see when I let go, it automatically snaps it to the build plate. And that is because over here in my move dialog box, you can see on the left here, it says drop down model and it is checked. So we want to uncheck that. And now when we lift this up and let go, you can see right there, it is staying in place. So we have got that. And now we've got this wonderful little cube that is floating that there is no way we can actually 3d print this so now let's go over here to our settings panel and if you do not see all of the different settings i see just click over here on the little hamburger icon and click all and then that will display all of the settings there are for you to see now let's go to the support tab and go to the drop down here then we're going to click generate support and just check that and we can see that we're already set to trees. So let's go ahead and slice this. Now, just to make sure that we're only looking at our supports, we're gonna go ahead and turn off the model. So we're not actually viewing that. So we come up here to the color scheme, and then we're going to go to the shell and just uncheck that. And now all we're seeing is the support itself. And you can kind of see the silhouette of the box, but we're not seeing the actual extruded lines. Now we're ready to talk about our very first issue, and that is a single isolated support structure. We can see that this is a very tall support structure because of how high it needs to support. Now there is a high potential of this support failing while printing because it is so high and also it's so skinny because the bed going back and forth and the head end moving back and forth, you can just imagine that over time, back and forth, back and forth, it could potentially break free. So we wanna be able to kind of give this a little more girth and allow this trunk to be thicker. That way it'll be a little more stable when this bed is moving back and forth. So what we're gonna do is come over to our trunk diameter and you can see right here, it's already set to 15. But let's just say 
we want it at a 35. Now, I'm going to go ahead and slice that. Now we can see that this is a lot beefier now. It's a lot thicker and it's a wider base and it starts to taper up to where it needs to support. Now the one thing I will say, increasing your trunk size is going to increase the amount of filament you're going to use. But this is also reducing your risk of a failed print. So you kind of have to go hand in hand here and look at it. It's like, is it worth using more filament to be able to make sure I have a successful print? Or do I really want to skimp on the filament and possibly fail the print and then waste even more filament? And those are the things you got to think about when you're doing supports. Now let's talk about the second issue, and that is maybe you're just printing way too fast. I have seen it so many times, myself included and from others, you're just printing way too fast. And I understand that there are so many amazing printers that print so fast these days, and I mean, I have a bunch of them, but when it comes to supports and I think there's going to be an issue, I will slow down my supports. So I am not saying slow down the entire print. No, just slow down when it's printing your supports. Now, the great thing about Cura is we can actually just separate this one thing out so we can slow down when it's printing supports. So let's jump over to Cura and let me show you exactly where we can change this setting. So we're back in Cura and let's talk about the speed of printing supports. So let me just go ahead and collapse my supports panel and we're going to come up here to the speed panel. So let's click on that to the drop down. And if we scroll down here, we can actually see right here, support speed. And all of these are the speed that's attributed to when it is printing our supports. So let me go ahead and slice this so we can see what we're actually talking about. The nice thing about Cura is they actually break down all of the specific elements in the speed. So we can actually control the speed of each part of the support. So when we say we have the roof speed, that is this right here, this lattice, and that is actually our roof. And then if we keep coming down, we can see we can see our interface right here. Then, and once we go all the way down, we can see our end fill and that the speed for that, and then just the general speed of our supports with the walls. Now, when it comes to slowing down your support speed, I personally like to go down to about 25 millimeters a second. Now, I realize that that is going to slow down your print time, and I'm not saying that I do this for every single print. This is specifically for those prints that are just having a lot of trouble. Like those supports just keep failing on you. And that means you've got to slow down. Because sometimes I'll just have my support speed at the default setting of whatever it shows up as. And they print out just fine. But other times, depending on the model, I mean I have to slow it down because I just cannot get them to print right. So slowing it down to 25 is a really good speed. Now it is slower, but you are going to have a lot higher of a success rate. All right, now number three. And number three is one of those things that I have on all the time for no matter what print it is. And that is Z hop. Now, what is Z hop? Essentially, when you have the nozzle and you're printing something and it actually has to move over to something else, it will actually lift up, move over, and come back down, and then start printing. So, that will actually help you, because if you ever hear clicking, like da -da 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 -da, when it's going back and forth and it's hitting that infill, that means it could probably be hitting your supports too, and the nozzle can actually just slam right into a support, and guess what? That's going to break off, and that is going to give you a fail. So using Z-Hop is one of those amazing little features that it will move up, over, and down, and then start printing. So you'll never actually experience the nozzle breaking off one of your supports. So let's go into Cura, and I'm going to show you exactly where we can change this setting. So to mess with our Z-Hop, we need to go to our travel settings. So if we come over here to our travel settings drop down and we scroll all the way down, the very last thing here is Z-Hop when retracted. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. 
Now, an important thing to understand, Z-Hop when retracted and what that actually means. Now, I've already explained what Z-Hop is and how it lifts up and moves over to the next spot. But when it comes to retracted, that means every single time it moves up and over to another part of the model to print, it is going to pull back the filament, and that's what retracted means. Now, there's the other thing here where it says Z-Hop only over printed parts. Now, we could do that too, to where it will actually lift up and move over parts. And if it's not moving over a part, it will just do a retraction and not do any Z-Hop. Personally, I like to just leave it as a Z-Hop period, no matter if it's going over a print or not going over a print. Now, the one thing here is if you are just not comfortable with the amount that it's lifting, you can increase that. So our Z-Hop height right now is at a 0.2 millimeters. So if you're printing at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, it's essentially lifting up one layer, moving over, and then moving back down. So just to be safe, I sometimes will just double this. If there's a lot of movement across different parts of the model, I'll just double it. So it's actually moving up two layer heights and then coming over and then back down. Now this is something that pretty much no matter what print I'm doing, I always have Z-Hop when retracted on. So now let's get into the next tip. All right, so let's get into number four. Number four is the one that, I mean, I personally love it and I use it all the time, but some people don't like them, and that is brims. Brims will actually give your supports a better bed adhesion to where it grips onto that build plate, and then when it gets taller and taller, you're gonna have less risk of it just breaking off because it's got a solid foundation. Now, when you have brims, some people have complained that I just can never get them off. And I tell you what, the number one tool for that is a deburring tool. And I love this thing because it actually has a swivel. And all you do is just drag it along the edge. And this sharp edge right here will just slice off all of those brims super easily. And I tell you what, this is worth its weight in gold. So I will go ahead and put a link to this down below for you if you're interested in picking you up one. But I mean, I love this because it will just follow the contours. You just drag it and it comes right off. But when it comes to brims, there are two different types when it comes to supports. There is the internal brim and then the external brim. And I like to use both of them because that's just widening that base for you to be able to have the strongest foundation. Now, if you do not want to be using brims, you can absolutely just use an internal brim and not an external. But if you're having all of these issues where they're breaking off, then you might want to just get over it and get yourself a deburring tool or just a really nice straight edge like an X-Acto knife and just try to cut away all of those brims. So let's jump over to Cura and I'm going to show you where we can change these settings to be able to get a better bed adhesion when it comes to these supports. All right, so let's talk about brims in Kira. So I have my little cube and it is floating. And if we just go to our preview, we can see those supports that is going to be holding my cube. So if we scroll all the way down and we see our very first layer, we can see that this is it. There is no brim or anything like that. So the one on the inside is the easiest because all we have to do is go into our supports tab and scroll down and then you're going to see right here enable support brim and I'm going to go ahead and check that then I'm going to go ahead and hit slice so we can see what it looks like now you can see that we have a little brim on the inside so if I scroll this up you can see there is nothing on the outside, it's only on the inside. And this is just kind of widening our base on the inside so we can get a better bed adhesion. So the two options we have is we can go to our support brim width and it can go by millimeters or we can go by the line count. So this right now, this is 10 lines across. So I could do, let's say 15 lines and let's re-slice that. And you can see now it's the circle has gotten smaller on the inside right there. 
So this is a really good way to get good bet adhesion when it comes to your supports. And honestly, I don't see the reason why you shouldn't have that on. Even if you don't like brims, this is an internal brim that it really doesn't affect your 3D print. So now let's go to the other type of brim and this is an external brim. So all we've got to do first is just kind of minimize our support tab and then we're going to go right below that to our build plate adhesion tab and go to that drop down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the first and only menu option we have and that is selecting the build plate adhesion type. And if you go to that drop down you can see brim is right there and this is going to give yourself a brim around your support. So we can go ahead and hit slice on that. And now we can see it goes all the way around. And when we come down, we can see that, look at that. I mean, that is a lot of adhesion. So we have really widened the base of this support. So if we are kind of worried about our supports breaking off the build plate and we need better adhesion, this is one of the best ways that we can do that. Now, there is this other thing right here where it says brim replaces support. So I can uncheck that and we can slice that again. If you notice, no, nothing, nothing really changed. And that's the one thing. I don't fully get this. When you're using internal supports and external supports, like this setting really doesn't do anything. Because if we look... This right here is what our first layer looks like without replacing supports. So now if I click this, watch this. There is literally no difference. So this is one of those things that when it comes to tree support specifically, this setting really doesn't do anything because our settings is already matching what this setting does, if that makes sense. So if you're looking for better adhesion to your prints, those are two ways that you can get it when it comes to your brims. Now, the one thing I will say, remember, if your model is touching the build plate, this outer brim is going to go around it as well. So that is just something to think about because some people don't like removing those brims around their models. All right, real quick, I just have to say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to be like these awesome people, you will get exclusive access to my private Discord channels where we talk about printing, painting, softwares, and everything else in between. And you'll also be able to see all of my behind-the-scenes content of what I'm working on and what's going on in the workshop. But... I just wanted to say thank you guys. Other than that, let's get back to the video. All right, now number five. And this one is, it happens to some people. And that is where your tree supports will just be breaking and they just don't hold up. And that is because of that internal pattern. So it's your infill. They call it the pattern, but it's basically your support infill. And there are a few different ways that you can go with it. Now, lines is the one that it does by default. And lines, it, it works out pretty well. But if you're really having issues, you're going to have to really increase your strength of your actual tree supports. Now the quickest way of doing that is really just changing the type of pattern you're using. But if you do this, it is going to make your supports a little bit harder to get off. So let's go over to Cura and I'm going to show you exactly where we can change these settings and what it actually looks like. All right, so to see our support pattern, we've got to go into our support settings tab. And let's just scroll down for a little bit, about middle way here, and you're going to see support pattern. And if we see right here, we see lines. And lines is literally just lines. It's just like the infill. And I think they call it the support pattern because they don't want to confuse people with the infill of your 3D print model and your support structure. So instead, I think they just went with pattern. So what we need to do is change that. So a few things about your support pattern. There are a few in here that I honestly, I just don't recommend. The first one is cross. 
And because if you see here, this is not really helping with your structure here because they're just like independent little things in the corners. And I personally, I just don't think cross is a very good infill, especially for a support because supports aren't very big and cross really only starts to work if it's in a big area. Another one is Concentric. I really don't recommend using Concentric because if you look, there is really no value it's playing in besides wasting your filament and adding in extra cones. So I personally don't think you should ever use Concentric. Like I would rather you use Cross than this one because it's literally just wasting filament. I just don't get it. Now, if you're wanting to increase the strength of your supports, the two best ones, in my opinion, are triangles and grid. So triangles is, it's just the best because it, let's think about it. Triangles is the strongest shape in geometry. And this is no different. It is a very good infill because of the pattern itself. And the other one is grid. You can't go wrong with a grid pattern because when it comes to these types of things that we're printing, you, they're all weird and a grid is very consistent, just like triangles. So at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter whether you use grid or triangles when you're trying to increase the strength of your supports. And the last thing I wanna say when it comes to your pattern you can change the density just like you can with your infill on your models. And you can do that right down here where it says support density. And I have it set at 10% right now. So let's say we want to increase it to 25%, which in all honesty, that's like ridiculous because this is a lot. Because when you do this with your supports, they are going to be so strong, you're going to have a heck of a time breaking them off. So I would never want to go this dense with my supports because, I mean, this is the kind of density that you would have in a 3D print, not a, a removable support. But what I like to do in my general rule of thumb, anywhere between 5 and 10% is what I like. So I would actually go somewhere around 8% and slice that. So you can see that even at an 8%, it is still going to give you some structure. And you can go a little more with that. Like we had it at 10 earlier, and that is perfectly fine. I think the big thing here is you just got to do what you, feels comfortable to you. You know, I have done this enough to where I know anywhere between 5 and 10% just works. So if you're trying to strengthen your supports, I would do something around that to start with. All right, so I've got a bonus tip for you guys because I like you and honestly, I just thought of it and it's kind of important. And that is your foundation. This is not a Cura issue. This is a environment issue. If your 3D printer is actually on a table that just like shakes and wobbles, that is not good. You want your 3D printer on a solid foundation. So if it's going back and forth or if it's going up and down, you don't have to worry about your printer like wobbling and possibly getting a little bit more of a jerk on there and then guess what? That's going to give you either a layer shift or that could possibly just make one of your supports fall off. Or actually, if it starts moving in a certain way because of that wobble, that support could start straying off because it's going over and over. And that's kind of like a layer shift issue. Some of the things that I've noticed when there are layer shifts when it comes to supports, it's usually the actual foundation of the printer because everybody's worried about the actual printer. Is my bed aligned and all of that? But it's on this flimsy little cart where it's going to be rocking back and forth. I know personally, I would rather have my printer sitting on the floor knowing that it is stable than having it on some type of like little desk or something like that where I can see my desk shaking. That's just not good for your 3D prints. And honestly, if you're experiencing a lot of layer lines right now, that might be your reason why. And the last thing is, is you wanna make sure that your support overhang angles are correct. And you've got those dialed in and you know what they're supposed to be. Because when it comes to your tree supports, you really wanna make sure that you know what those angles are. 
even for the branches coming out. Now, I really discussed this in the last video where I'm talking about the support overhang angle, and that is vitally important to understand that. So if you haven't done that, I recommend going back to my previous video and watching that one next because I explain your support overhang angle and the importance of it. Because if you don't know that, I mean, even your tree branches will start messing up. And let me jump over to Kira and I'm going to show you where you can put in that number to be able to have your branches just a little bit better when it comes to your tree supports. So in my last video, we went over all of the support overhang angle options and how to find those right angles. Now, once you have the right angles, one thing that can really help you out to have better branches is knowing what that angle is and putting it into place here. So we have the support overhang angle right here. And, and in my last video, we discussed that 60 was pretty much my support overhang angle. Now, when I go up here and I see my maximum branch angle, it actually also makes it 60. So these two numbers are tied together, well, loosely. But what we want to do is when we're dealing with our branch angle, we want to go a little less because that 60 is us trying to push how far we can go before we need supports. But we want the exact opposite of this. We want to be very safe with this. So for our maximum branch angle, we would want to go with something like a 55. Or to be even safer, we can just say at 50 degrees. And that is what our branch angle is. So when I slice this, you can see that right here, none of these angles are more than 50 degrees. So there's some that are less and then some that are exactly 50 degrees. So when you're dealing with those branch angles and your support overhang angles, and it's just important to understand what your maximum branch angle is and what your support overhang angle is. So if you missed last week's video, I strongly recommend to go back and check that out. That way you can get these right settings for your Cura Slicer. All right, so there are our five tips and the other two, I guess, but you know, hey, more is better, right? So if you have any other questions or issues with tree supports, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can address them in a future video. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and I will go ahead and see you over here in this next video.